One of the most common things I see on YouTube is the GH5 and the poor skin tones that the GH5 delivers. Now, personally, I've never really seen a lot of these bad skin tones. I've seen it on YouTube, however, I haven't really experienced it myself. And I think it's due to the workflow that I've adopted from the start and the way I color grade and the way I set my camera. So today I'm gonna to show you four tips on how I get my skin tones out of the GH5 and GH5S to look the way they do. Number one, the color profile that you use is very crucial. Like with a cell phone, colors look vibrant, contrasty, and very saturated. Ideally, you do not want that from your camera. All those colors are embedded in, and you need to actually play with the colors and make them how you want them to be. Now, in saying that, I don't use log, I don't use 10-bit, I actually shoot in 8-bit, and I use the natural color profile. However, on my natural color profile, I've made the settings to the following. I've set my contrast to minus two, my sharpness at zero. Now you can obviously adjust your sharpness and bring it down if you don't like such a sharp image. This will not affect the skin tones in any way. My noise reduction is zero. The same with the noise reduction, it will not affect your skin tones whatsoever. However, the crucial part comes where I set my saturation to minus one, as well as my hue to minus one. Number two, correct lighting. Now I am saying this with a pinch of salt, as a lot of times when I form two, I don't have access to bringing massive lights on set and out on a location, obviously due to the nature of the shoot being a lot more fast paced and real life. So we don't always have that luxury as content creators to have perfect lighting. But if you do have lighting, like I do in a situation like this, the goal is to always have the correct Kelvin that you're shooting, as well as some higher end lights allow you to actually adjust the hue, meaning your green, and your magenta that comes out of a white light. Yes, that can be quite a problem and sometimes your light will actually throw off a green hue onto the skin, making that skin tone not so pleasing. Number three, white balance. Now, although white balance is extremely crucial, like with filming with lighting, when you do not have lighting, this is pretty much your only option on the GH5 to get better skin tones. As someone that's worked with raw photos for the last 12 years, it makes it extremely difficult to adapt to non-raw footage. With a raw image, you can adjust your temperature, your tint, your hue, and it really doesn't affect the image. It doesn't matter how you've taken that shot originally if you are gonna adjust the temperature afterwards. So that is the benefit with raw. However, when you are filming with the GH5 in log or natural or any other profile, even HLG, whatever white balance you've chosen, you've embedded those colors within that footage and adjusting them will obviously deteriorate your footage and make it not so pleasing. Now, I think this is where the GH5 and the GH5S suits my color grading and style a little bit better. I always shoot my footage a little bit cooler than I should. I don't like shooting warm footage as with experience, I found that the GH5 is a little bit more acceptable to color grading when the footage is cooler as opposed to warmer. It's almost as if the colors are a little bit more baked in when they are warmer. And then we get to probably one of the most crucial parts on the GH5 and the GH5S when it comes to white balance. When choosing white balance on the GH5, you can go to a setting that says adjust. On the adjust setting, you can actually toggle the tint that is within the GH5. So what I like to do is actually go from the center and move two to the right towards the blue and one down towards magenta meaning away from the green. Don't always look at where you are adjusting to, but look at where you are adjusting away from. So by adjusting one down, you are removing some of the green that is originally baked into that image. Number four, finally, the editing process. One of the things as a photographer is having the customization to edit one image. It's pretty much like editing one frame. Now with video, we don't really have that luxury, especially when it comes to time constraints. So this is my little hack around making sure that my skin tones are perfect. So I'm gonna show you a clip of a model and for the illustration of this video, I'm actually just gonna show you the simple way to do it, but if you wanna use masking tools to track face, let's say you have too much orange and red in your shot, obviously then you would have to just mask it out. However, I do have a lot of red and orange and yellow in the shot and I'm gonna show you why you don't always need to and I would say 99% of the time, I don't have to mask out the face. So check this out. What you would do is I have really some color wheels and hue saturations on here. However, as you can see, none of them were adjusting to the skin tone. So we're gonna add a second one over here, a hue and saturation, and I'm gonna to go to the hue versus hue dropper, and I'm going to select the skin tone. Now, as you can see, it creates three dots. The center dot with a gray line is actually exactly where that skin tone is. This here is the threshold. 
from left to right. So if I move this threshold further away, I adjusted the hue of the original color, you'd see that the majority of the image actually starts adjusting. So that is not what we want. So I'm gonna take the dropper again, select the skin tone, and then I'm going to narrow this down much closer to the skin tone. Now, if you max it out, this is the best way to see what you've actually selected. So I'm gonna max it out. You can see I've selected quite a bit of the plane over here and it's pretty much just the plane and I know that is red. So I'm gonna bring the red slightly closer to the skin tone. Now keep in mind when you are adjusting this, don't go above the line or below the line. Make sure it's on the line. You can do it manually as well, just by making dots. Now, as you can see, I've got quite a bit of the skin and enough of the skin. I'm gonna make it a little bit wider so I can get more of the skin. And now I'm going to go and bring this back up to the middle. I'm gonna zoom in at 100%, just put it over his skin. And then I'm just gonna bring this down and you can watch how his skin tone changes from green lower down all the way up into a red skin tone. Now, obviously, if you start it on the green, you could actually just move it up and it would be red. This shot is somewhat a little bit closer to perfect due to the, obviously the plane being white and the whole area around it. However, I'm just gonna lift it up a bit into the red tone. Now, what I'm gonna do is I like to push them in the red tone sometimes. So then I can go into my hue versus saturation, select it. And then what I actually do is make that selection a bit smaller and I just bring down the red a touch so that it's not overly saturated. Now you can see that skin tone. So there's the full image. If I toggle it on and off, you can see that I haven't even affected the rest of the plane and the rest of the image. So that is one of the best ways to work around skin tones and adjust it. Obviously, I am taking a shot here that is pretty close to accurate. Now, one of the things that I think a lot of filmmakers struggle with is the fact that their skin tones are affected by the surroundings. If you are filming a subject that is standing on grass, they get this massive skin tone hue that comes green underneath. And that is majority of the time where the complaint actually lies. If you are using studio lights, just keep in mind that it's probably that green and magenta tint that's actually causing that issue. So the GH5, isn't really perfect like some of the Canon cameras that you get, but Canons do suffer in other areas and the GH5 and the GH5S excels. Just keep that in mind. Every single camera has its pros and cons. And to be quite honest, I don't think the GH5 skin tone issue is as bad as what you see online. A lot of people I have seen complain about skin tone issues. And when you look at their footage, there's actually nothing wrong with the skin tone. They just assume it's gonna look like something else. For those of you that would like to try out the color profile as well as the B2 M1, I will drop those settings in the description so you can copy it into your notes and you can try it at a later stage. But for me, this is what works. And if you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. Actually, don't consider it, just subscribe. It's free. Smash the like button. Thanks for watching, wherever you are in the world. Have a good day, good evening, good night. Goodbye.